Greetings, my name is JC. And I'm Ian. And this is the Gamer's Guide, Dan. In this episode, we're doing something a little bit different for the holidays. Uh, we're going to be doing a holiday guide. Yeah, we uh, we wanted to kind of give our take. I, obviously, everyone's Christmas list is going to have, you know, your big, huge releases like uh, the new Modern Warfare and Yeah, especially Star Wars, with games Jedi you haven't Fallen picked Order. up yet. It's going to be something that you're asking for. And yeah. a lot of those games are kind of the big hitters of the year. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to name three of those big hitters where we feel if you haven't played that game, then you should really get on it. And Absolutely. why haven't you gotten on these three games? Uh, so yeah, these first three games in our list are three games that you should get if you haven't gotten them yet, and why haven't you gotten them yet if you haven't, and or at least borrowed them. them. Yeah, Go get them. <laughs> That's a really long title, but <laughs> it works. Uh, so the first game is a game that literally just came out. Uh, do like you want to go? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you po- want to go over this one? Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah. It doesn't matter what version you get. Uh, apparently you have an issue with me getting shield but it's because sword is the proper game <laughs> I, mean, I mean if i didn't get it then you would need somebody else to i, I get guess the that's true yeah because so. i don't know anybody who bought shield <laughs> because your exclusive pokemon yeah just has like this weird growth from mm-hmm. its neck right instead of a cool sword yep but, I don't know. yeah but, if you haven't played pokemon shield and you like games like pokemon or if you are a Pokemon fan or were in the past, uh, this is probably a good to, game to get and jump back into it. Yeah, yeah, this. I mean, I even think this would be a good introduction to a, a non-Pokemon fan. Yeah. It's uh, it's not overly complicated. It's got more depth to it than the, the Let's Go games. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really, to me, it just feels like they took the things that they did right with the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and made it better. You know, right. they added all of the great things that I loved about Pokemon into that. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, if you haven't picked it up yet, go pick it up right now. Mm -hmm. Our second game in this list is the Resident Evil 2 Remake. This game came out early in February, Yeah, and it's a really great game. This is how you should make remakes, and hopefully every other company that's making remakes has taken notes. I know there's some companies that have been doing them right, and some companies that are just doing... HD texture, high resolution packs, and things like that. Which, such I as mean, th- Square Enix is a company that's it, kind of those are doing fine. That. Like, They're fine. I'll, I'll pay twenty bucks for a, an up res version of a mm-hmm. game, but this is like this is a new game. Like mm-hmm. this felt like playing a new game. And the cool thing about this is is that it actually gives people a reason to want to be excited about it, especially if you're not a Resident Evil fan, because. The original game is a great game, and this just took a great game and somehow potentially made it even better. It modernized it. Yeah, in a lot of different ways. But if you were a Resident Evil fan in the past and you haven't played it in a while, or if you are a Resident Evil fan and you haven't gotten on this game for some weird, uh, odd reason, then Resident Evil 2 Remake is the second game on our list. And we're going to round it out with uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. This uh, this game has so much depth to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of replayability as well, because I find some games where the game wants you to replay it, it's kind of just adding a couple of features and not really giving you a reason to want to replay it. And this actually has... This has like four full different stories in it. Yeah, and my one friend did let me know that he saved the one story path at the specific point. He looked it up um, to figure out where they branch out into like the third or fourth like ending path, for example. So yes. you didn't have to replay through that section of the game. And it didn't really spoil anything for him either. So yeah, it, you don't even have to play through all the paths if you don't want to. No, it I, does I add in a lot of uh content in the game though each one is very very different yeah i i played through one Mm -hmm. and i mean it took me i think about 90 hours yeah like it it was yeah they're fairly robust rpgs that have quite a bit of content in them and the nice thing about it being on the switch is you can play it wherever yeah and that i feel like that made the huge difference for me Mm -hmm. was i could put in you know half an hour if i had half an hour right but uh yeah so that kind of that finishes off our list of three kind of really big titles that 
if you haven't picked him up, you should. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have, you made good decisions. <laughs> yep. Um, so let's continue on with our recommendations. We each have five mm-hmm. games that we'll go back and forth with on games that we think are great for your gamer friends or spouses that may like different types of genres and uh they these... might have been things that were kind of overlooked this year you know things that they just missed because there, there's been a lot of really big releases mm-hmm. there ha- there certainly has been uh so uh do you want to start off the list with your first one ian yeah for sure um for me I, the phoenix Wright trilogy mm-hmm. um yeah i i i will admit i didn't pick up the trilogy mm-hmm. because i have the trilogy on, on the, the DS. DS. Yeah, and this is on the Switch, correct? Uh, it, it is available on the Switch, uh, the PS4, right. um, PC as well, I believe. And I think okay. I think it's on everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can you can get this anywhere. I think you can actually get this on iOS too. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can play this wherever. The Phoenix Wright game on the iOS, I think that probably would be, or uh, Android would probably be a, a good home for it as well because it's... A uh, dialogue selection and stuff like that, so it yeah, probably works fairly well. It's uh, you know, kind of like a visual novel, but mm-hmm. uh, I I really liked the fact that you can go out and get physical versions of this right for the um the three major consoles. Yeah. So if you've got a loved one, especially who likes uh storytelling, mm-hmm. I mean, because it is a visual novel, it, it has adventure elements to it, and there is some investigation. Right. Um. But yeah, ultimately, it is a lot of dialogue options. Cool. So, yeah, it's worth checking out. JC? The first game I have on my list is a horror action adventure game. Ooh. It's called Dark. Oh. This is an indie game that came out in August of 2019. And this game kind of reminded me a little bit lo- about the Little Nightmares game. Uh, okay. It's aesthetic is semi-similar with its sort of like walking around and platforming. Um and its graphical style looks a, like it looks different, but it's certainly a game that if you like those types of games where uh, it has a horror element to it and kind of a little bit of Mac Burr horror and things like that, that this would be a game that might be up your alley. It doesn't necessarily have like huge jump scares like um, some of the VR games or um, uh, th- uh, first person shooter horror games and things like that where it's just trying to, to get you scared, but it just has like a horror theme to it. Um, yeah, Dark. Um, it's on various different platforms on the PC and uh, you can get it on some of the major uh, consoles as well. And that's Dark with a Q, is it not? Yes, it is. Yeah. Just to. Uh... For all you people looking it up. <laughs> yep. I don't want to get get it confused with the Dark for the 360. No, it is not Dark for the 360. That was <laughs> an older game. Um, your next one, Ian? Uh, Slay the Spire. If you've been yep. watching recently, you heard me uh, probably rant a little bit about this game. Yeah. My other friend has been playing uh, Slay the Spire, I think, uh, over the late summer and uh, early, early fall. He was playing it for a while, too. Yeah. It, I mean, it's been out for a couple years i think yeah at least in early access and then it it finally got released this year um and on all the consoles as well Mm -hmm. and again you can go down to the store and pick up a physical copy of this if you really want to right um if you didn't download it as early as possible like me (laughs) but this is this is great it's a it's a deck building roguelike right and yeah it's the kind of thing where if you have five minutes to play you can get five minutes of enjoyment out of this game. Mm-hmm. And I, I like, I mean, I play it on the Switch. Yeah. As I play a lot of things on the Switch, I know. But uh, yeah, it. I like being able to, to start something and then I can just stop. Mm-hmm. And there's no, um, no concerns of missing something. Right. Because I can see exactly where I am. I can, you know, as soon as I pop back in, I can see the cards that I picked up. I can see all the elements that are... Um, like the little treasures that I've gathered. Um, yeah, everything's right there. There's no trying to figure out where I was. It, I, you dive right back in. Plus, it has like, there are daily challenges, which give you certain certain things to get through um, your run. Okay. And kind of like how many points you can get with like these cards. That's kind of cool. Yeah. There's, gives you a reason to come back to the game. There's a lot of depth to the game, and there's a lot of like, unlockables as well so for each of the characters 
you will unlock new cards when you hit like certain point values. Awesome. So there's a lot of reasons to go back. So Slay the Spire, uh, I, available on almost everything. Not on, not for your cell phone, but mm-hmm. all major consoles, right? And PC. JC. My next one is a tactical RPG released in May of this year uh, oh. called Druidstone. Okay. If you know the uh, developers who created both Legend of Grimrock and Legend of Grimrock 2, this is their third game. And they decided to uh, walk away from the um, kind of uh, th- 3D, dun- no, <laughs> uh, th- 3D dungeon style RPG uh, retro style, and they... Uh, tried their hands on a uh, tactical isometric RPG and it's really fun. It's really cool. Uh, it has a lot of different elements that you would expect in some like a tactical RPG with their own sort of like flair with the magic and things like that. It's got a really neat story and uh, the graphics kind of look like a polished uh, Infinity Engine game like uh, Icewind Dale or Baldur's Gate or something like that uh, with uh, like a, a, n- a newer skin on it basically. And uh, yeah, it, it's pretty good if you like these style of games. So you can get it on um, bo- both of like a uh, Steam or GOG. And uh, yeah, your next one, um, Astral Chain for the Switch. All right. Yeah, it, it's um, it's made by uh, Platinum, mm-hmm. so the same people that did uh, Bayonetta. Yeah. So it has a lot of similar um, like combo base. Yeah. If you um, action like combo action. Uh, style games they're definitely very good at them <laughs> yeah absolutely and it has that but it also has this really cool like investigation element to it okay because you're a police officer right uh of, of, of some sort like it's a there's a lot more to it but you end up at crime scenes you do investigate you do piece clues together it it's surprisingly fun mm-hmm. it's uh it's still super weird like you would expect yep and uh yeah, if any of that rings any bells, mm-hmm. it's worth checking out. Yeah, especially if you like the like Bayonetta games. Yeah, or if you if you like Bayonetta, they've done the like over the top action of Bayonetta, mm-hmm. or and over the top storytelling because mm-hmm. they go super weird all the time. Yeah, and this is no exception. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they they still go go right to the wall with their weirdness. Yeah, so that's really cool. <laughs> Astral Chain. On the Switch. I think only on the Switch. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Next one for you, JC? Uh, the next game on my list for suggestion is Overland, which came out in September. Oh. I talked about this game briefly in what we've been playing over the last week, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a survival horror game that's a isometric uh, indie game that sort of has... Um, it's not cell shaded, but it's kind of uh, drawn in very like pastel colors, like minimal and, almost. Yeah, min- minimalist style of uh, graphics, and you're basically trying to get from the east coast of America to the west coast, where there's potentially a haven, and things get weirder and weirder as you go across the country of the United States. Um, the world has been kind of attacked by aliens and there's these weird creatures that are uh, about the different towns and whatnot that you travel through in the city that they're they're like echo sensitive and potentially different sounds will trigger them so they're coming towards you and they might be cell sensitive smell sensitive as well i'm not entirely certain they don't really go over that but they tend to know where you sort of are and then if they hear you then they really know where you are yeah and you kind of have to avoid them because you only have different items that you've picked up on your journey because you basically uh, start off by yourself and then you go off and you can get various dog companions or human companions on your side that can help you carry stuff and your vehicle might break down or you might need to find some meds and stuff like that and you really have to balance between who am I going to keep because like we can only bring so many people because our vehicle only holds four seats and uh, what goods are we going to keep on the uh, different people and stuff like that and whatnot. Kind of like an alien invasion version of Oregon Trail. Sort of, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and it has uh, XCOM-style uh, turn-based 
points system to it where you can move and then use an action and things like that. So okay. it kind of has blended that genre in with, yeah, Oregon Trail sort of. Yeah, it's it's really fun if you want something a little bit different that has a really cool aesthetic to it that's just sort of a challenge, kind of like Facet and Light, where you're just trying to to complete an objective or convoy where you're trying to protect your convoy. This is just you're trying to get across the... Um, uh, cr- across the country to the other side to a uh, potential safe haven and you can beat the game in a few hours and then try oh, a different wow. run and it's different every single time so it's a really fun game there you go your next one Ian um, I, I had to throw on a VR title mm-hmm. uh, I didn't have to but I wanted to because this year has been great for VR games Yeah, and uh, one of my favorite was Blood and Truth mm-hmm. uh, if you have a PSVR or know somebody who has a PSVR who hasn't played Blood and Truth, mm-hmm. get it for him. This is great. This is probably one of the best VR experiences I have ever had. It's a it's a first-person shooter, yeah, sort of. And it's got like a, a London crime like uh, story to it as well. Yeah, and it, it's incredibly cinematic. Like it is a it is a cinematic shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, the, there are so many like wonderful like you basically move from set piece moment to set piece moment right it's yeah it's and then all you kind of the... do the action and the different ordeals of getting through the various obstacles and everything within this crime syndicate right? yeah like, like it's each of the different scenes it, there's a there's a lot of yeah I, I think you can play it with a controller but i think if you're playing it with a controller you're probably doing it wrong yeah it looks like it was really designed to have uh neat features that work well with the move controllers yes. and that's if you don't have move controllers but you have psvr maybe borrow the move controllers or, or get a, a set of them because yeah there's a, a lot of like climbing um i yeah you showed the one video clip i was, I was where like you're hanging moving. from a thing and shooting at somebody yeah it was probably the coolest thing in vr that looked the weirdest to anybody else who wasn't me Mm -hmm. so yeah blood and truth um it's not not even that expensive this is it's like 30 or 40 dollars yeah yeah and it it seems like if you really like like mob movies especially ones that are based in london and uh, cinematic experiences yeah if anyone's old like me and remembers the getaway Mm -hmm. this is this is Kind of the getaway, okay. but in VR. <laughs> cool. And it does, it, it tees up for a sequel, and I really hope that they continue the story. Yeah, that'd be really cool, especially with uh, the PlayStation VR being continued um, support generation. with the next generation. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So, And your next one, JC? So my next one is a bit of a combo pack because you might be interested in getting the complete collection or just the latest expansion pack, which I believe is Work Solo. So the game series is Sudden Strike. I've spoken about it a couple of times in the series over the, the year. Um, it's a tactical historical RTS game where you get units and basically that's what you get and you have to complete different objectives with what you got every now and then depending on the mission sometimes you'll get uh, various reinforcements and things like that to help you along the way but they happen at certain um, trigger points and every battle that you do here is based off of a battle that actually happened in World War II and its difficulty is um, sort of scaled um, based off of what the difficulty was in the um, in the actual campaign for oh, wow. for the Axis and the Allies and the different uh, sides that you can play are. But uh, it basically, it's like if you're playing through the British campaign, you basically play uh, British um, scenarios where they won the one. And if you play as the Axis powers in Germany during World War II, then you play as various battles that they actually won in them there's a couple of them where the objective is to retreat uh as a successful retreat but that's uh, basically the different types of missions there's a lot of variants in the types of missions too so the complete collection came out this year which basically has the original game which came out a couple of years ago with all its expansions like finland and africa dunkirk uh in the pacific war which did come out this year and the in Basically, it's available on the. You can get the complete collection either on uh, like Steam or GOG on the uh, computer, 
or you can actually get these on the the console because it's available on the PlayStation 4 and uh, the Xbox as well. So wow. the newest expansion pack is the Pacific War. I talked about this a little bit as I was playing through the um, the American campaign, and uh, it's really cool. They added in ship combat with a battle on either side where you get to control various ships, and there are a couple of uh, aircraft carriers are on, one on are on our each side, and they have different uh, units and things like that. And they have different abilities and things like that that are really neat, like the torpedo attacks and, and everything, and d- different uh, really hard-fought scenarios where you have to go into the... Um, tunnels and the islands and things like that and uh, wipe out your enemy and everything which was very difficult for them to do and I found was uh, very hard to do in this scenario as well the first time playing through it because I I barely had uh, any units left survived once it was done which is uh, there was a lot of casualties in that in that battle but the series is really really fun and this year they released the complete collection which gives people the opportunity to go back at a little bit of a reduced rate to uh, play through the whole entire series. And there's a lot of different battles, and they're all really fun and challenging. And the cool thing about it is, is you can replay each of the different battles with the different commanders. And the different commanders have different perks, so you'd have like different types of units and things like that where you can get different bonuses with your points and things like that. So there is some replayability in that respect, even though you're playing the, the same mission uh some missions are a lot harder with the armor general than with the infantry general for example okay um so yeah sudden strike series it's really really fun and if you like um historical tactical games this is something that's uh that potentially up your alley uh and uh your last one ian well if you don't like historical rts's <laughs> <laughs> but if, you do like but you do like rts's uh-huh. you might really want to get Wargroove. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so Wargroove is essentially like a spiritual successor to Advance Wars, mm-hmm. which, I was mean... was a really great game in yeah. its own right. Yeah. Uh, except this is uh, fantasy mm-hmm. instead of like um, future, modern day yeah. future combat. Yeah, um, you know, so you've got archers and knights. Um, you've got four different factions, mm-hmm. all of which, uh, essentially, all of the units are the same. They're just... Uh, reskinned versions of of each unit. They have like rock paper scissors shotgun. Yeah, it's you know like a a pikeman is going to be better than a, or a pikeman will do more damage to a a knight mm-hmm. like a mounted unit, and everybody has their own version of a mounted unit, and everyone has their own version of a pikeman. Right. So it's kind of it's really cool, and they do look so drastically different, which I I loved. I I love that. Yes, they're the same unit, but they're called something different and they look different. Right. You can tell what it is, but it's it's drastically different. Um, there's a lot of depth in here. There's a huge campaign. And on top of that, there's multiplayer. Uh, and there's a big online community mm-hmm. that makes their own maps and scenarios. Yeah, you were telling me about this. That's a really cool feature about this game because it adds a lot of replayability to it as people make maps kind of like uh, Super Mario Maker. So I've actually played a few scenarios that were almost like an RPG. Okay. You would uh, they had some elements on like a far side of the map that you could interact with which would like allow your character to do something. Mm-hmm. So uh, people have done some really great work with this. Um, yeah. I, I've been really, really impressed with the community. Um, again, this is available on the uh, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Um, and actually, you can get them physically now, too. Right. It was released way earlier in the year on, uh, like, just uh, downloadable. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, uh, recently they've released physical copies on all of the systems. So you can go out and pick it up for your loved one if they like fantasy RTSs. Awesome. What's your last one, JC? So my last one is a game that is a really good recommendation for people who like old collectathon platforming 3D games. And the game is New Super Lucky's Tale for the ah, Switch. Yes. Sorry. 
Yeah, so what's really surprising about this is it was originally released a couple years ago for the Xbox. Yeah. But this version actually has a lot of enhancements and features added to the game based off of a whole bunch of fan uh, and critic suggestions that reasons why they dislike the game and why they like the game. So they actually kind of reworked and tooled the game a little bit for its Switch release, which is why it has the, the new in the front of it, I'm assuming. And yeah, so this version specifically for the Switch has that, um, I don't think the Xbox version was uh, re-updated. And it's a really fun game. I I picked it up on the Switch and played it for a little bit for a couple of uh, levels and the different areas and everything. And the graphics look really fun. It's really entertaining. It's a great game to play uh, with your kids if you have any. And it's just a really nostalgic game, especially if you grew up playing some of the games like uh, Spyro or Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64, any of those really collect-a-thon style games like uh, even Croc, for example. And yeah, so... uh, Even Croc. Yeah, even Croc. Gotta throw that in there. Always. Um, It's yeah, not as bad as people say. It could have been a potential Yoshi game. Anyway, but yeah, so it's uh it's a really great game. It's not the the longest game out there and uh a little bit on the shorter end. I think you can beat it in like 8 hours or something like that. It's still not bad though. Yeah, I mean, for what it is, I I wouldn't want to be playing this for 30 hours, but yeah, it's a really really fun game. I'm really happy that you threw that out there because I feel like this is something that got way overlooked yeah and i think a reason why it got really overlooked was because the original version got a lot of criticism for basically being extremely bland and they took that criticism to heart and really worked at the game and made it a lot better based off of the uh reactions and i've even seen other people review the game and it seems like that sentiment is sort of the same around the board where it's like yeah you know the original game was okay and it did have its flaws and they worked at fixing a lot of those flaws and made a much better game out of it so yeah it's really cool how the how the company did that So our next section is uh, some hardware ideas. We have a list of three different things that we think might be really fun gift ideas for uh, some of your friends or significant others that uh, are sort of not video games, but they're sort of video game related and might be useful for the gamers, different gamers out there. So the first thing on our list, uh, do you want to go over this? Item? Yeah, the Genesis Mini. Mm-hmm. This I, I was super excited about this because uh, we had the NES and SNES Minis yeah. o- over the last couple of years. And uh, to see Sega say, yeah, we're going to do something like that, was super exciting. Especially with putting the amount of like extra quality and like sort of almost authenticity behind it because a lot of the retro Genesis consoles that have been released over the few years, they're okay. No, they're bad. Kind of terrible. Yeah. And this, this got it right. Um, M2 is the developer that is really well known for making games that are re-releases and emulated. They specifically tweak each game so that they work correctly and like the way that the original counterparts actually work and is a really well known and loved company that has done uh, really great conversions and uh, upgrades in in the past and sega basically got m2 to actually make the console uh games on here which is one of the reasons why i think this was delayed a little bit once um but you know with some things are definitely worth the wait and this is certainly worth the wait yeah and i i really think sega did it right you've got 40 games and it's not just like a rehash of any Genesis collection because there has been a lot of Genesis collections released. Yeah, and the Genesis collections have had some variants with them, but there's a lot of overlap between the different Genesis collections that have been released since like the PlayStation 2 up yeah. until the latest one. And you've got you've got a couple games that overlap, mm-hmm. but you also have some like things that you've never been able to play elsewhere. Yeah. 
which is kind of really cool because they added in some games that have never had English translations, such as uh, Monster World 4. Yep. And the game has been fan translated, but we never really got an official release here. And it's really cool to get that game on here. And, and Alien Soldier is the other one that comes to mind, which is a treasure game that wasn't really available on a physical uh, cartridge in North America so you have to basically import the Japanese version and it's prohibitively expensive well even I mean beyond that you you've got like uh, Contra Hardcore mm-hmm. and Castlevania Bloodlines both of which are at least a hundred dollars yeah a piece. hundred plus complete yeah like it, those are big things and Tetris yeah, the Tetris is an unreleased game, and it is very bland, uh, but it's kind of cool to see it because yeah. it was basically never released, and I'm assuming the reason why it was never released is because it was so bland. It's not the best version of Tetris that's ever been released. In fact, it might be one of the worst ones, but it, it, it is still there. It's kind of cool. It's a part of Sega history. Yeah, People knew the game was coming out, and then it, was just, it, it never saw the light of day. No, I I was just I was really happy with uh with the quality here. Mm-hmm. You know, I was really impressed. Yeah. Yeah, if, so yeah. If you've got a nerd on your list, um especially a Sega one, especially a Sega or you know what, even uh even I would say for like a younger person mm-hmm. who hasn't had the opportunity to play a lot of this stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of like fantastic games here. There is. And you might be able to get one of the devices that I've mentioned before that are a little bit cheaper. But to be honest with you, um, not everybody cares, but those emulators are really, really bad. And it's not the way that you played them whenever you were younger. No. The sound is completely off. The sound's a little bit off on this one, but it's the closest I think we've ever seen. And it's just a lot better experience and you have like an actual controller in your hands uh that's a like a sega genesis controller and they've got the extra ones and everything and yeah the sega genesis mini it's a really really cool product next up uh the next up is kind of semi-related but i'm putting the usb versions on here because um it's the retro bit sega saturn and genesis controllers there's two different versions there's the actual console controllers that you can get and the uh, usb versions of them for both the genesis and the uh saturn they're coming out with the wireless version as well if you're interested into that um but like i i play a lot of retro games or style games on uh the computer or platforming games that are just like 2d and i generally uh use my playstation 4 controller to play those games but if you're if you play like fighting games and you don't have an arcade stick or um, uh, you play um, some old games that just you have like let's say a retro Pi or something like that uh, sorry if you have like a Raspberry Pi or something like that and you want a controller that's really solid and is like a one to one of the original both of these controllers I, I got a couple of each of them they're really fantastic. They play just like the originals. They're the D pad feels the same. E- even the plastic feels the same. It's 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 mm-hmm. amazing. It's as if it was like printed um in the nineties. Um, they're they're actually uh like have the official like Sega seal of quality. Like they oh, they wow. they licensed them, so they worked together with Sega to to get it right. And these are the best like Sega controllers that I've ever seen. And um, there's been like I said some uh old retro style games that I play on GOG and I've started to use the Saturn controller just because I like to have those six facing buttons right there instead of the four. I've always preferred the six over the four. Um, And yeah, it's a really, really great controller that you can get that will play on a lot of the different platforms if they take USB. And I think you had one more suggestion for hardware. Yeah, so if... uh, the last item on the list is a gaming headset. So it's the Logitech G635, uh, which is an um, updated model of their original. Their core headsets are like the red ones, which are stereo, and the blue ones, which are kind of like they mimic surround sound. 
uh, in the actual headphones, which are really cool. And I have the blue ones, and I think you have a version of them as well. And they're really solid uh, headsets, but they just recently came out with this new model of them, and they have some really cool features. They look really slick. Um, I'll show a picture up here to show you what they look like. And uh, yeah, so um, they're, we're, we're not like sponsored by any of these companies, obviously, no. but they're, they're feel free. Yeah, sure. But like they're really solid quality headsets that aren't too expensive. So if you don't want to spend like hundreds of dollars into like Sennheiser headphones or something like that, then this is something that can connect to your computer. There's also like the dongle that you can use to connect and use on your PlayStation and stuff like that if you like to play through a headset and everything. And they're just really high quality um, headsets that have really good microphones on them as well. It won't be like condenser mic quality uh, audio. Audio, um, but it is kind of like that level right before it. They're really great headsets. So this next section is kind of a special segment that we decided to do for this episode since it is kind of our holiday episode. We decided to get each other a gift, which was like around $15 um of a video game we don't know whether or not we have the game or not but uh if we do it um, we're gonna play could it even play it, <laughs> it, it, it could even be a game that we've never played because um with collecting games you kind of get to the point where you, you might not have even played some of the games which is definitely i mean i might fact. see this and be like oh man i've never played this and have a copy of it at home <laughs> yeah exactly uh, so we got each other a game, and what we're going to do is we're going to open those up next, uh, and we're going to give ourselves uh, about a week, a week and a half to play the game, and then we're going to re each release an episode of a review of that game and what we thought of the game that was actually in the gift. Uh, so do you want to open yours up first, Ian? Sure. All right. Sure. So people might have noticed in the background this here. That's... Oh. Uh, that's your game. This is way too big to be a copy of Anthem. Yep. But maybe it is. It, it, it might be a copy of Anthem, but I know you played that game, and My, you already have it, so I did not get it. Um, I'm a little disappointed. My hopes were that uh, it would be a pair of uh, copies of Anthem. Oh, okay. So, spoiler alert. But, uh, <laughs> oh, it's... It's a it's a room temperature pizza. <laughs> it is a room temperature frozen pizza. Yeah. I am so excited about that. All yeah, right. so a guy from our local uh sorry about the noise, but a guy from our local uh retro game shop that's here in Waterloo, Retro Replay, the owner actually helped me select this game because I was like, We're doing this thing for our show and uh can you help me find a game for like a retro console? So I, I, I got a game and I didn't want to put it just wrap the game itself because then it would be obvious, oh it's a PlayStation game oh or something goodness. like that. So Well, it's a Nintendo game. Yep. It's Base Wars. Yeah, so I don't know if you've played this or if you own it, but I know you know of the game. I do. Uh, I do have a copy of this, oh, actually. Oh, okay, cool. Because Base Wars, I think, might be one of my favorite sports games. Oh, okay. So I am super stoked. Actually, I'm going to take this home. All right. I haven't played... I haven't actually played Base Wars. Oh, really? Though, probably in, like, 20 years. Oh, okay. So that's how much I play sports games. <laughs> uh, we did a whole sports episode. Yeah. And... Uh, if you are curious about how much either of us played sports games, check that out. <laughs> you'll be <laughs> yeah, you'll be impressed, maybe disappointed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mine has a little bit of a story. Cool. Uh, I went to uh, there's a game store actually in uh, St. Jacobs mm -hmm. at the market, and uh, yeah, I, I went there with a friend of mine. I was like, oh, this is what what I'm doing, and uh, I, my uh, my friend Jenna and. Uh, the gentleman that works there kind of gave me a hand. I was like, this is sort of what I'm looking at. They threw out a lot of stuff, um, some good, some bad. I listened to neither of them, <laughs> and this was my choice. All so right, I, cool. you, there's a very good possibility that you might have this. Oh, okay. Yeah, we both own a lot of games, so. Correction, that you might have these. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Uh, so the first game is a 360 game, and it's uh, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Uh, I don't actually own this game, nor have I played it, so I, that's I kind of exciting. I figured you did not have that or knew what it was. Yeah. So I knew what it was, but I, I haven't played it. 
This is the FPS, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, it might be. I don't know. I'll put a notation as to which one it is. <laughs> but yeah, so I, 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 I recall this being released. Uh, and Sid Meier's Pirates for the PSP. Um, I actually have this game. Okay. Was... <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, this is a really good uh, PSP game that I haven't played in a while. Um, so cool. I wasn't the the uh, the Resident Evil. I'm like he probably doesn't have that because I don't think that was one of the good ones. No, it's not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're gonna but, find out how good it was. But then I saw Pirates and I was like, oh man, Pirates! Mm-hmm. Like I that is probably one of my favorite pirate games. Mm-hmm. Is the Sid Meier's this Pirates. original Sid Meier's Pirates for the computer? Yeah, well, that and then the the various releases for console as well. Yeah, I've actually never played this version of it, though I own this version of it on the PSP. You don't say. It. <laughs> um, but uh, I've played the original one for DOS. That's yeah. the version that I've played. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. No. Um, well, sorry, you've uh, played the game, but I guess hey. you can do. A r- I retrospective and review of it. Like I said, I haven't played Base Wars in probably 20 years. Okay, cool. So it'll be fresh. It'll be fresh. I'm super excited (laughs) and I hope it's as good as I remember. Yeah. 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 I've actually, I don't even think I've played Base Wars before. And uh, Mike was telling me about it and he's like, yeah, you can like knock out the entire team. I'm like, if he hasn't played this game, he's definitely going to enjoy it. So. Yeah, that's my kind of sports <laughs> game. I, if Again, if you've seen our sports episode, yeah. you know that the Mutant League games are probably my favorite because yeah. you can win by uh, attrition, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in closing, if all else fails and you don't like anything on this list or really know what to get your gamer friend or significant other, uh, get them a Riot gift card or a PlayStation gift card or something like that. And, yeah, if um, they have an Xbox One, get them Game Pass. Yeah, sure. Get them Game Pass. It'll be the like cheapest gift you've ever gotten them, and is and a really probably great gift. one of the best gifts they've ever gotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's a hundred like here's hundreds of games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode uh, with our holiday guide uh, in special. And yeah, if uh, we miss the game that you want, then uh, let us know in the comments down below on yeah. uh, what game it is that what you're asking you for about? this year for Christmas. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Sorry that you own the game. I had hey, no, no, no worries. I, I, it's a crap. Sh- I mean, you own the game too.